Hey, what's up everyone? Ryan Arnold, aka Demon Master Reviews here, and today I'm going to be doing my abridged retrospective for Breaking Benjamin. Benjamin, a band I've been wanting to do for quite a while and finally get to do them, obviously be as an abridged retrospective. So, let's not waste any time, let's get into this. So the band was formed... The legitimate band was formed in 1999, although in 98 they were they were originally a covers band that played stuff from bands like Weezer and the Beatles, basically softer rock music. And that had a former and that had a member. I think it had two other people in it, but one prominent member. We'll get back to him in there. Is Aaron Fink, a guitarist? Um, but then I believe. That this band because Ben went to California and then came back, but he had a new band, and this is when it actually was formed in '99 with Jeremy Hummel on the drums and Jason Davoli on bass, and they were originally called Plan Nine, but a lot, of, but after people confusing them that they were called Plan and Nine, they they changed it back to the name that Ben had had, Breaking Benjamin, um, and then together the trio did some shows. Shows played some original stuff. One of the songs that they played was Polyamorous, which we will get to, which it was on the debut, but that was played. Um, they played that, and that caught the ear of a DJ, and they played that song in, he played that song in rotation and helped um, finance and produce their self-titled and self in, and independently released self-titled EP in 2001. But they had a different basis at the time because Jason DeVoli had left, or he re was replaced. And basically, they had another lineup change that would, and because of this EP, they also had another lineup change, which would be the lineup that would be for quite a bit, for at least two albums, the first two albums. They would have uh, Aaron Fink, he'd come back and he would rejoin with Ben. And they also have Mark Klapaski replacing the other guy who replaced Jason Devoli. I forgot his name. Somewhere around here, I'll have the name of what. The other bassist is, but I can't remember it off the top of my head. But that lineup would stick for a while, and they would sign, essentially sign, with the label that they've been on since the beginning, Hollywood Records. Records. Um, and they have six studio albums, albums, and have several lineup changes. So, let's get into this. Uh, we start off with the debut, which unfortunately I do not have. Uh, saturate, which the sound from some of the songs I have heard sound more lighthearted. Some sound more lighter and stuff like that. Hence why they were more light music, kind of more of like think more heavier of Weezer or something like that, or hell even Three Days Grace, or you know pop punk stuff like Green Day or Blink One Eighty Two. It sounds more like that. That you know Polyamorous was a a big hit for them, um, and. Um, yeah, they got them big hits, obviously. But then, it wasn't until we get to... Now we start to get to the albums, actually. Oh, it wasn't until this album, We Are Not Alone, that they get a little bit heavier. There's still some of the light stuff, lighter stuff. Like, I think Simple Design kind of has... There's songs on here that are a little bit lighter, some badly stuff, you know. But one of the examples of a song that is pretty, pretty heavy is the opening song, So Cold. So dang heavy that they got a little bit heavier, basically. But obviously, this would be it with Jeremy Hummel as he would eventually leave for personal reasons, family reasons, and all that stuff. Spend time with family. So they went and got a new guy going into their third studio album, Phobia, and they got a guy I believe by the name of and then as I pull out the booklet here, Chad Sizeliga. Zelica. He is, if I can even find it, he's the one, if you can see, he's the one with the light hair, basically, the only one with the light hair, that's Chad, and you might recognize him, he has been in, he was in briefly for like a cup of tea, um, was in Black Label Society after he left this, after he left Breaking Benjamin, but um, this is where they get big, pretty much. The the song, and this was basically my introduction to them. Uh, the song, The Diary of Jane, which was on, uh, if I can pull it out real quick, because I actually own it here. Um, I can pull it out. 
I first heard this that song from this game right here, NASCAR 07. And it was kind of basically the opening song, basically. That's my introduction to them. So this was basically my introduction to Breaking Benjamin. Breaking Benjamin, and it blew them up. It got them huge, practically. Practically. Uh, it's kind of a continuation of what they were doing on We Are Not Alone, but it blew them up pretty big. This was, it was basically kind of the band's they're kind of similar to Creed. <laughs> yeah, basically, it blew them. It got them big. Diary of, the, Diary of Jane, because of it being on this game, got them big to where their Creed levels are big. Big. It was their big freaking hit. Hit. And it, it continued on to the next album, although I don't care about this album. Dear Agony, where songs like I Will Not Bow was on, I think, a movie with Bruce Willis. But, um, yeah, there's songs like that. Give Me a Sign was another big one. But for the most part, this one's this was just a forgettable, just a forgettable release for me. I never really, never really cared for this album that much. And this was the last one with them with the current lineup at the time of the Phobia lineup. And most of the songs were, I believe, Ben helped wrote some of them, but he also had someone who would come in later, Jason Rauch. But none of the songs if I'm looking on here, as I look through the booklet here, all of the songs were written by Ben, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Some of the songs were co-written by Ben and Jason Rauch. But because of that, they went on, basically went on a hiatus. And then, they, and then some drama between everybody at this point in this lineup. Um, uh, the other guys, I think Mark, Chad, Aaron, all made kind of a best of. Because of the band going on hiatus, because of Ben having some illnesses, undisclosed, un unknown illnesses, but we don't know. But he said it's gotten a little bit healthier. But uh, he was a little bit ticked off, and he just basically fired Everybody, Aaron, Mark, and Chad. Chad, like I said, he would go on to, he'd be fine. You know, he'd do, he was in Block Label Society, which was kind of an upgrade, basically. But then we get to this next lineup and their return album in six years, Dark Before Dawn. And this was with a completely different line, lineup. Obviously, Jason Rauch was in the lineup. But you also had Keith Wallen on guitar and vocals. Obviously, I mentioned Jason, he's on guitar. Aaron Bruch, bass and vocals, and Sean Foist on the drums for this lineup. Um, but it's kind of just a continuation. It's kind of a mixture of, it's a little bit more of like phobia, just a little bit more of a modern style. Style. You know, I love everything on here. Failure, Angels Fall, Breaking the Silence is Great, Hollow, Close to Heaven. Heaven, do you know it's got it's got some great stuff on here. Defeat is another great one. It's got some killer stuff on here. Some really, really great songs on here, and I enjoy it. But obviously, this brings us to what is essentially their most. Although they did release something called Aurora, which had basically acoustic versions of older stuff and one original song on there. But the last studio album they would do. Ember, and this is by far their heaviest, like really, really heavy stuff on here. Like freaking Feed the Wolf, Red Cold River, Tourniquet, just heavy, more alt metal. Like they went from Creed, alt rock, kind of alt metal, to more of like maybe in the vein of maybe some Disturbed, Godsmack. You know, it's heavy. The heaviest album they've done with those kind of songs. It's just. Oof, freaking a freaking amazing album just from the songs I've heard it's really heavy heavy I dare say I dare say the heaviest album they've done to, to day. I wouldn't say it's like I put in my top three easily top four top three four you know I do kind of prefer this over dark before dawn but not above we we are not alone in phobia those are personal favorites of mine no favorites of mine, but this is their heaviest to date. But yeah, that'll do it for mine. Oh, it's pretty much. 
on this bar as I'll quickly yeah. mention it. I believe it's the same, pretty much, I believe it's the same, yeah, it's pretty much the same lineup. Same lineup. It's pretty much the uh, same lineup. So yeah, as the Dark Before Dawn line. But yeah, that's gonna do it for my Breaking Benjamin and Bridge retrospective. I hope you all enjoyed this. If you did, click the like button or the dislike button. Comment below what your thoughts are. And if you're new to the channel, whether you're on Utreon or YouTube, uh, click the subscribe or follow. Like I said, if you're on Utreon, follow us. Plus, or so YouTube subscribe to you know and be notified of when we do not videos mostly live streams like I said in my I think one of my previous videos so yeah thank y'all for watching this has been my breaking Benjamin abridged retrospective I will see y'all later and as always keep things metal.